and welcome to NC Trends. I am Sheon Bankole. Now, it's been 11 years since the demise of Nigerian President Umaru Musa Yaradua, and Nigerians on social media have put out different posts to remember the late president, whose iconic achievements include reduction of petrol pump price from 75 naira to 65 naira, the review of the armed forces and police officers' salary, endorsement of the electoral reforms review, among others. In remembrance of the President Yaradua, who died on this day in 2010 after three years in office, former President Goodluck Jonathan tweeted, Today I celebrate my boss, friend, colleague and brother, President Umaru Musa Yaradua, who departed this world 11 years ago. As politicians, we share the common vision of a peaceful, united and just nation. Moving away from that, at young underscore attorney tweeted, On this day 11 years ago, President Umaru Musa Yaradua passed away. He is indeed one of the best presidents Nigeria ever had. A true democrat, selfless leader, and an achiever per excellence. May Allah forgive his shortcomings and grant him the highest rank in Jana. Amen. Finally, on Yaradwa, at Muhammad Kabir Uthman tweeted, Life goes on at its own pace, but some memories can never be forgotten or erased from the mind of the dearest ones. Your legacy of integrity and dedication will always remain in our thoughts. May the soul of President Umaru Musa Yaradua continue to rest in peace. Amen. Yaradua truly will never be forgotten. We moved to Ghana where the hike in fuel price sparked an outrage among petroleum consumers who have taken to social media to express their disappointment through the hashtag Fix the Country Now. Ghanaians are also calling out the leadership of the country to fix Ghana. They have taken to social media to pour out their frustration about the high cost of living, poor quality of life, economic hardships, water shortages, erratic electricity supply, graduate unemployment, and so on happening in Ghana. This tweet from Oppressive Reads. World Bank gave Ghana $100 million to tackle COVID-19. But the government is making excuses that COVID affected the economy so much as if only Ghana experienced COVID. What did they use the $100 million for? Hashtag fix the country now. Moving on to the next tweet from at King of Accra, who says that the people who are telling us to fix ourselves mean to tell us that we are the ones dragging the nation behind. This also means they feel entitled to their position. This should tell you that if we do not speak up, we will end up poorer in 10 years. It is not well. Fix the country now. Mark Jordan tweeted, all that the Ghanaian youths are asking for are accessible electricity, quality education, good health care, employment and jobs with decent salaries, affordable rent, good drinking water, accessible roads, just the basic things. Hashtag fix the country now. Hmm. We move swiftly away from Ghana back to Nigeria, where popular Islamic preacher Sheikh Gumi has called on the federal government to yield to the demands of the bandits for the release of the abducted Greenfield University students. Recall that his bandits requested for 100 million naira and 10 motorbikes before releasing the Greenfield University students. Sheikh Gumi's statement partly reads, why not give them the money, they release the boys, and then we pursue them and get our money back and do what is necessary. It is simple logic. So bring the money from the central bank. Reacting to this, at Dr. Olufumilaya tweeted, Sheikh Gumi knows where bandits are, but the Nigerian army doesn't. Sheikh Gumi knows where bandits live and that they live in huts, but the Nigerian army doesn't know this. Sheikh Gumi knows that the bandits drink from streams, but the Nigerian army doesn't know. Isn't God wonderful? <laughs> Moving to the next tweet, at Maurice Moye tweeted, if our security agencies are actually serious people, if they have the fear of Jesus or Allah or whatever they believe in, an invitation and sit down with Sheikh Gumi will reveal the identity of these bandits and we end this nonsense mess. But are they serious enough? I can't sleep. Finally on that, DJ Switch tweeted, is it that Gumi is a computer program designed to whine us every now and then, or are we in a matrix where Gumi's program's mission is to embed this messed up code so that we sympathize with terrorists? Is DSS a children's game? Is the government Ludo? Niger can make someone mad. And that's it on NC Trends today. You can join the conversation on Twitter at New Central TV using the hashtag NC Trends. Thank you for joining us. We'll return to Sulai with the news.